In today's video, we're going to be unboxing some 1 4 3rd scale model and toy cars from German manufacturers of the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s. First car we're going to look at is from the 1970s. It's an Opel Manta. I'm sure lots of you will remember these cars. Competitor to the Ford Capri based on the Vauxhall Cavalier and Opel Ascona. This one is by a company called Praline. But on the side here, there's also another company's name which I recognise. I think it's Bush, you call that. I don't quite understand the phrase on the side there. I think it's a German, a German phrase. Let's have a look. This car does have a metal aerial. That's not with the box at the moment. It's a pretty decent detail on it. Remember those lured side trims? Let's go opening doors. Oops. Opening doors and underneath it's got the Opel General Motors badge, Opel Manta, Praline. Really nice little model this. Let's look at the next one. The second car we're going to look at is a Volkswagen Passat. I'm not quite sure what like Mark, he would call this. I think it's a B1. It's the first Passat that came out. So it'd be 1974. These had a range of different fronts on them. Square headlights, round headlights. They updated it, I think, about 1976 or something. They put a bit of a more aerodyna aerodynamic front on it. So this is by Shuko. The box is not in great condition. That's probably my fault. This was actually sold to somebody. Who didn't read the advert and it's they thought it was one to twenty four scale and it's they were a bit surprised they got it. So I uh, got it back and gave them their money back. So it got a bit squashed in the postage unfortunately. But you can still see it. Just promotional box by the looks of it, Passat. I'm not sure if they're all like that. What does that say? I don't understand the German language unfortunately, but someone else may. Let's go and take it out. So I bought this originally in 1997. So this was not bought new, but it was bought from my model shop. This is by Shuko. So these are a bit of a cut above the gammas. It's got more opening features. Front looks pretty good. Underneath. Again, this seems to be common for a lot of these German manufacturers. Tells you about the car. This one's got lots of opening features, so it's got an opening bonnet. You can see the engine in there. Opening doors. Now, this is not a hatchback. Uh, it seemed to be quite common in the 70s with like the Fiat 127 Austin Allegro cars that looked like hatchbacks that actually they were saloons, Citroens as well. I think it wasn't until the Passat B2 it became a hatchback. Let's move on. Continuing the Opel Ascona theme, this is an Opel Ascona B. This was known as the Vauxhall Cavalier in the UK. Turn to front wheel drive. This is by a company called Gamma. Now I remember these well. I used to have quite a lot of these when I was a lot younger. This is the only one that survived. I used to have a lot of like Beetles and things like that as well. Um, I do have a few more now though, as we'll see later in the video. One of the things I like about these boxes is if any box is if it shows you the range on not just the back, but also underneath. In fact, while we're here, let's have a look and see what I've got already. So I've got that one, I had that one, don't have it anymore, and I had that one, I 
I've got that one. I've got that in silver. And I had that one and that one, not anymore. I've got that one. I had that one. Um, got that one. I've got that one, but it's not a police one or not an ambulance one. I had that one, and that's what we're looking at here. Made in West Germany. It's mainly all German cars. Opels, BMWs and Mercedes. These were always a cut above the Matchbox and Corgi cars that I had at the time. Let's have a look. What I like about these models is that... I'll try and get that to focus. There we go. Uh, they've got the correct wheel trims. Nice front treatment there. Ascona. And it's got the two-tone paint, I remember that well. Uh, opening doors. And this one's nice, it's got an opening tailgate. And I like the badges as well, that's the correct font for Opals of that time. And underneath, I've written on pen, unfortunately, back then when I got it, shouldn't really have done that. Sorry about that. That'll upset the purists. That just tells you a little bit about the car. So it is 1.8S. That was a fairly sporty one then. I prefer this to the Vanguard's model that you get of the same scale. Blue tinted glass as well, I think. Probably just like the real thing. My dad had a Cavalier estate like this. Hey, on to the next one. Right, the next one is a BMW E30 323i. Again on the back, same same treatment on the back. I think that's probably the original price tag on it. I got this in a swap, I didn't buy it, but I think that's probably the original price tag. I remember them being between five and six pounds, which was a lot more than a Corgi or Matchbox, and you could only get these in an actual model shop, not a toy shop. Again, this is by Gamma. Let's open it up. This box is actually in really nice condition, so I'm going to be careful which end I open. Here we go. Not the best representation I've seen of the E30. I think that one would go to the Corgi version. Just slightly bigger, but nice nonetheless. It says BMW on the number plate as well. BMW 323i. Nice wheels again. These probably correct BMW wheels. Opening doors. And a nice opening boot lid. I always like an opening boot lid on a car. Especially these ones. Nice small hinges on them. Not too crude. Let's move on to the next one. Another BMW, this time a 325i E30. Again by Gamma. Same treatment on the back and underneath, nothing different there. And I think this is a slightly later E30 because it's got the black bumpers. Because they took a lot of the black trim away by the late 80s for the E30 BMW, just to make it look a bit more modern. My dad had an E30 Touring. It's always a very nice car. There we go, so it's a Cabriolet version. This one's quite different at the front, this is a much better front. This front's actually really nice. Again, it mimics the later 80s front with less chrome. I don't know whether than Yeah, those number plates are printed on, so those are original. It's got one in the back as well. I thought they'd been stuck on afterwards. They're a bit crude. Really nice car. As you can see on the floor, on the metal floor, they've printed the floor mats, which is a really nice wee feature. Again, opening doors. And the same... Opening boot with the nice hinges. 
let's move on. Oh, actually, before we do, I meant to show you this on the last one, but I suppose it won't matter because they'll be the same. Underneath, it's got a whole list of the different BMWs. So it's got the 316, 318i, 320i, and 325i. Now, on the other one, I'm th not sure it might say 323i, because I think the 323i was replaced by the 325i. The 323i was a sort of an earlier E30 model, and they, they, they replaced the sort of rationalise the engines a bit. Let's move on. It's a Mark III Ford Transit by Shkabak. It's a very unusual scale. It doesn't fit into either the 1 4 3rd scale category or the 1 2 4 scale category with the rest of the range. It's actually 1 3 5 scale, which is very strange. This is a promotional box, so it's got the Ford and the Transit. It's a grid design. So of 1980s, it's got some cobbles as well as if it's on the street. Picture of the van on the side, presumably to coincide with the launch of it, and on the back, and there's nothing at all underneath. Let's go ahead and take it out. One of the mirrors is a bit loose on this, so it's just fallen off. That's fine, we can put that back on. Now it's screwed on, so we will unscrew it. I think the mirror possibly needs glued on. There we go. This is a really, really nice model of the Transit, really accurate proportions. Nice Transit badge on the front bumper too, place the number plate. Really accurate lights and indicators. Nice bits of grey trim there. This is a little minibus, which is cool. Quite basic inside. Really nice badges at the back too. It's got a tailgate as well. Plastic door handles, proper wheel trims. Underneath it says, Skabak model Ford Transit 135 made in Germany. Well, probably the nicest model of a Mark III Transit in my opinion. But I think you'll get nicer than the one by Corgi or Matchbox. Let's move on. The last one I'm going to look at today is something a little bit more modern. This is a Vauxhall Vectra by Schuko. Now these were dealer models and Gamma also produced dealer models in almost identical boxes. Uh, the Gamma models are quite different in so far as that they have opening features. We've got quite a few courses like that, opening doors and boots and so on, but they're quite a lot more crude. These Schukos are more like models, they don't have any opening features but they are a bit more finely detailed. Quite a plain box, typical 90s Vauxhall, Vectra. This is not a toy and not suitable for young children. Models available include Astra, Calibra, Corsa, Frontera, Omega, Tigra, Vectra. Now, looking at those, I'm almost certain that only the Omega, the Tigra and the Vectra were made by Shuko. And from my memory of the other models, I've got an Astra and I've got a Corsa. And I'm pretty sure the Calibra and the Frontera as well, they were made by Gamma and they looked completely different. Let's take it out of the box. This has not been opened, but I can see there it says Shuko. It says when the last time this was opened. I've actually got another one of these, a dark green one. I used to have a Vectra B. It was a hatchback. It was a V registration, two litre, lovely car. It is such a really nice model, this. Very accurate. It's quite a while since I've seen it. Really nicely detailed. Very, very accurate. Box 
Vauxhall badges. And what I liked about these as well is the Vauxhall ones were actually right-hand drive. No longer tells you anything about the car itself. I think some of these must have come in plastic plinths because that looks like something to hold it in there. Really, really nice. Available in all different colours. I think there was an estate as well. As I say, I've got a saloon. I'm pretty sure there was an estate as well. Thanks for watching.